Hi, everyone. So we're going to be taking you through an overview of the VC Lab program. Everyone here is potentially a candidate for cohort 13, uh, which is going to start uh, at, at some point towards the end of February and into March and get everyone formed and starting a fund in 2024. Um, what VC Lab is, is a free four-month program to plan and close a venture capital fund. Now, for many people, uh, they're going to be also starting their firm. So essentially, if you're starting and working on your first fund, you are launching a new venture capital firm and you are referred to as a new manager. If you are working on fund two or fund three with the same management company, then you're referred to as an emerging manager. And our program works with both new and emerging managers. We work with venture studios, we work with accelerators, and we work with uh, more traditional funds and fund of funds. Uh, just to give you sort of, we tend to focus on early stage. <clears throat> so most of our managers coming in that are starting traditional funds will do angel funds, pre-seed, seed, and series A funds for the most part, though we do have some people that come in uh, with later stage funds as well. Um, one of the biggest benefits of the program, just put plain and simple, is that we're saving people over two times uh, the amount of <clears throat> effort and time that it takes to launch a venture capital fund. So normally, managers without VC Lab spend anywhere from 18 to 24 months to get to a first close. And, and, and I know this number's actually gone down. So this number's a few uh, cohorts old, but we're averaging right now uh, under 5.7 months to a first close. A lot of people are getting their first close done in less than four months. Then there's a but which is uh, so people are finishing their first close in the four months of the actual accelerator program. A bunch of people close around the ending of the program, which is at the four month mark. And then some people take longer. But the number of people that are taking longer is getting lower and lower. So it, it's it's it you know the the simplest way to look at this is probably the easiest stat to look at, which is we're going to get you to a close much faster than doing it on your own, and that's because we help you avoid all these sort of common mistakes that everybody makes, right? So um, you know I'll I'll outline the program here and just give you a sense of some of the things that that we help you do that save time. But the, the, you know, one of the first things is we help you get a very good thesis. So we're, we spend about a month uh, and, and some change really working with you on your thesis. And you're like, well, you know, I my thesis, blah, 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 right? My thesis is great. I know what I'm doing, okay? Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's not, right? You know how you know if your thesis is great? If one in five people that you tell your thesis to invest money in your idea. And if you're not at that level, if you're not at one in five people, you just tell your thesis to say, I'd love to invest, then your thesis isn't good, right? That simple. How do we know that we've, we work with thousands of managers, okay? Thousands. And, you know, they can say what they want, but we know, and, and then what happens, by the way, you don't need a deck, you don't need anything. You just need a one sentence thesis and you can raise hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. When you get to the many millions of dollars, then you need a deck and other stuff. And then we start working on that next. So once you have a really strong thesis, which you spend a decent amount of time on and you start warehousing deals that are interesting. And this is another massively overlooked thing. You need to warehouse deals as a venture capitalist starting a new fund or starting a new firm. You need to talk about deals that you've either done in the past and are bringing into the fund 
or deals that you're about to do in order to build excitement with LPs. And finding great deals take time. So as you can see, we start the deal warehousing initiative early in the program, but we continue running it to the very end because you've got to have great deals to start a venture capital firm and fund, okay? Um, and we work on fund materials, as I said, because you can get a few hundred thousand to a few million from people you know with a one cent thesis and that's it. But you can't get millions, and so you will need materials to get that next bunch of commitments, and we help you produce world-class fund materials, model, deck, data room, everything. In addition to that, you're going to start pitching limited partners uh, more officially, and we're working now to help people pitch institutional limited partners as well as you know, people in your network, first and second degree connections, we help you with standard email systems and the like. Uh, as you ramping up your pitching, you're going to fine tune the economics of your fund. And then we're going to get you into a position to close by the end of the program. And we've sequenced all this stuff. <clears throat> we've sequenced all this activity. We say you need to do this first and this second so that we just consolidate the time because people do things out of order. I'll give you a classic example. Uh, companies like Carta are very aggressive getting people to sign up for their fund admin services. If you don't have commitments to your fund from limited partners, you should not be talking to lawyers and you should not be talking to fund admin. It's a total waste of time. And it's like, yeah, one day I'm going to buy a plane when I'm rich. So I'm shopping for planes right now. Do you have money to buy a plane? No. Do you have prospects of buying a plane in the next few years? No. Like, then why the hell are you shopping for planes right now? You know, similarly, if you don't have commitments from limited partners, why the hell are you talking to lawyers and, and accountants and back office professionals? It's preposterous, right? So we sequence everything intelligently so you get maximum value. And it's working. In 2022, we were about 44% of all new managers worldwide went through our program. And uh, that number is larger in 2023. We're calculating it right now, but it's probably in excess of 50%. And we're doing this all around the world, okay? Uh, these numbers are actually also a bit old because they were from uh, no, uh, November of last year. And right now, uh, Latin America, Africa, and Europe are about the same. But I just wanted to put this up there to give you a sense that we are really operating all around the world, helping launch funds from Central Asia, Africa, everywhere, literally. And we're launching the first funds in many countries and the first funds in many regions as well. Um, and so how it works and the benefits to you, we have a structured curriculum with weekly activities to really plan and execute on your fund. Those activities take roughly 20 to 40 hours a week, give or take. Now, look, when you're raising a fund, it's going to take a lot of time, right? There's no other way to, to say it. I wish, I wish it didn't take as much time as it takes, but it takes it's going to be a full-time job at some point, right? So in the beginning of the program, the activities are more towards the 20 to 30 hours. But as the program progresses and you get closer and closer to a close, closing takes time, right? You might have 50 LPs that you're pitching and 20 LPs that you're going to close, okay? You need to be in regular contact with them. You then need to spool up other resources, like once you have the commitments, the, the things we talked about before, the lawyer, the back office, all that just takes some time, right? So uh, closing is not the easiest thing, but we're going to take you through it. And we're going to, you know, it's like climbing Mount Everest and you're going to have all the gear. You're going to have a map. You're going to know where all the crevices are, but it doesn't make it easier it doesn't make it easy, it makes it easier, right? And it's the same thing with VC Lab, right? You're closing a fund is climbing Mount Everest 
and we're giving you the map, the gear, the ladders, the ice picks, everything you need to make it happen, okay? And the curriculum is a major way that we do that. In addition to that, we have mentorship every single week. And these are not like mentors, like, oh, I've been a university professor, a venture for the last 30 years, and I haven't changed anything in that time, you know, like, which is exactly the truth. Um, no, those are not the mentors we have. We have mentors that launched funds maybe at six months or a year before you did, uh, right? So they're like, yeah, I'm, I did what you're doing just a few months ago, and here's what I learned. So you're going to learn from people who just launched funds just like you and what they did and what's working right now in the market. So you're not going to learn some theory by a professor at some stodgy university from 10 years ago that hasn't changed the lecture at all. You're going to learn from someone who 10 weeks ago was in your shoes or whatever and is closing on capital right now and will give you advice from the field on what's going on. We also have the theoreticians and, and the top names as well, but we're really focused on giving you practical advice to get your fund done as quickly as humanly possible, okay? I don't actually think you can move much faster than the program, um, and, and we know this from just, uh, that the program will move as fast as you can move, and it's about as fast as literally possible, okay? And then on top of that, you have uh, the, the peer support and we have a Slack community, all this stuff. We actually have really amazing AI as well. Um, and I'll, I'll show that uh, towards the end so that you can see some of the cool tools and AI and things that we bring to the table. But your peers, are you're going to be in working groups with peers. And many of your peers are going to be co-investors. Many of your peers are going to be follow-on investors. So the network of VC Lab is as valuable as the training and the mentorship. Um, and we've got an amazing platform, right, that I was just talking about to help you manage it all, right? So this platform is every single tool you need. It's got, you know, AI, as I was talking about, to answer questions. It's got all the back office. It's got CRM. So it, and just to give you a sense of what it replaces, you don't need Docsend for thousands a year which is what they're charging for the type of account you need. You don't need DocuSign for, again, hundreds to thousands a year. You don't need Affinity for thousands a year, okay? It replaces all of those things, right? And it's free. So I can just, uh, here's some screenshots, but here it is live, right? So you've got a fundraising pipeline, uh, deal flow pipeline, you have connectors, you have, you can recruit team members in it. Um, it's got all the back office stuff that you would want, all the reports that you need. Um, you can manage your capital count website forms, et cetera. So it's pretty amazing. But on top of that, it has AI. So you can literally ask it anything. Like I am struggling to close an LP. Uh, what do I do, right? Now you can get very um, specific, right? About whatever, so I'll make this a little larger so you can read the response. But basically it's closing LP can be a challenging process, it's important to be persistent and patient, it can take time. An LP is not showing interest or it's declined, it's best to move on and focus on other potential LPs. Remember, anything that is not a yes is a no. It's also crucial to continue prioritized fundraising until the entire fund has been closed. If you're facing disability, you can see advice from experience and fund manager. Okay, so then, so this ge good general advice, as you get more specific with your questions, it will literally answer anything. And what we've done is we have thousands of questions in our database, thousands of questions and trained an entire LLM on those questions. And some of the things that it's been able to answer are mind boggling, like very complex, very specific situations um, with 
actual numbers of whatever, like a term sheet and provide analysis of this term sheet. Here are the high level terms. Would you recommend doing the deal? And it will like break it down in great detail and why you should and why you shouldn't do a deal. It's, it's, it's amazing. It will change your existence. And by the way, this is used by about 600 firms worldwide. So it is the largest um, tool in the world to power venture capital firms larger than Carta, AngelList, et cetera. So Carta and AngelList have all sorts of different products. In the case of Carta Cap Table, in the case of AngelList, you know, syndicates, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of the firms using software to from those entities to run their back office, this is this is larger than both of them combined. Okay. Um, and it's free for you being in the program. In addition to that, we're we're here to help, right? We don't go away. When you come through VC Lab, we're gonna stick with you the entire time to make sure you get to fund three. Because we look at your success not on fund one, not on fund two, but getting to fund three, because we're in the business of building enduring venture capital firms, right? So when you look at some of the ways that we help going forward, we have this back office solution that um, helps you launch, get your first close, run the operations and grow your firms. And actually this, this is a bit, this number is a bit old. We're, we're over a hundred firms uh, we're powering right now. And so what you go through VC Lab, and if you need help getting the firm off the ground, we you apply to our one of our offerings called Desol Partners. And if you get in, we just help you do everything on the back office so that you can focus on investing and getting the winning deals. Um, on top of that, uh, we have a fund of funds. Right. So not only do we help you run the whole fund if if you get in, but we'll also give you capital. Uh, right now, we write two hundred fifty thousand dollar checks per fund. Uh, it's not every fund. So because there are lots of reasons why, like there are funds all around the world and doing all sorts of different things that we help. And our investment thesis for the fund of fund is is focused. But we're launching a second fund of fund. So um we are we plan to have a fully functional family of fund of funds over the next couple of years so it's entirely possible that a single graduating fund from our program may receive investments from multiple of our fund of funds because we might have a women focused fund we might have an africa focused fund we might have an ai focused fund and there could be a woman in Africa doing AI and get money from all three of those fund of funds. And we're writing checks right now, by the way, about two a month. So it's a very active fund of funds. It's one of the only fund of funds in the world that invests in new managers. So fund of funds will say they invest in new managers. And you say, how many new managers have you invested in, let's say last year? And they'll be like two. And we're like doing two a month. Uh, so it's just another benefit of the network. So again, we're looking at helping managers succeed through fund three, even if you're working on fund one. And this is an interesting concept, and I just want to double click on this for a moment, then we're going to open it up to Q&A. So you make decisions in fund one that affect fund two and affect fund three. So it's entirely possible that you can make a small decision in fund one and it happens more often than you know. And it messes up fund two and it pretty much makes it impossible for you to raise fund three. This happens all the time, okay? And so we're looking at your firm holistically. How do you do the right things right now to ensure that you're going to be in the venture business through fund three and universally fund three is considered the hardest fund to raise okay it's the gateway 
between an emerging manager and an established firm. If you can raise and run a fund three successfully, then you are going to be a venture capitalist for the long haul. But a lot of people fail. Fund three is very, very difficult. So our when we work with you, we're looking at how do we get you to the finish line to be an established and super successful firm. And the parent company of VC Lab is called Desol Group. And Desol is a term in venture often referring to the top decile, the top 10%, and is well known in venture capital that all of the returns of the asset class are concentrated in the top quartile and top decile. So our goal isn't just to make you a good venture capitalist. Our goal is to make you a top decile venture capitalist that can survive through fund three so that you become an established firm in the world with a vision and morals to make this world a better place. So with that said, we're here to help. I'm gonna jump over to your questions right now. Thank you so much. Hopefully you got some insights on this and uh, I look forward to answering your questions. So make sure to get them in the Q&A. All right, so Neil, should we pull up some questions? And uh, yes. All right, so we're going to go by the most upvoted questions. So there's a little thumbs up there. Do me a favor, please. Happy Tuesday to everybody. It's You're going to have questions that come in at the end, and it's going to be very difficult for us to get to them. So take one moment right now, and please put your questions in so that we can get them. All right, let's go. Okay. Yeah, we have about 30 minutes and we'll try to handle as much as possible. Um, most upvoted question comes from Evan. Uh, for those completing a pre-curriculum sprint, are we required to have fully executed packs returned, uh, returned ahead of submitting or does sending them out to confidence uh, complete the task? No, you need to get packs. Okay. So look, there, there. let's talk about the pre-curriculum. Let's talk about this, et cetera. So uh, there's some people that we like. So we get thousands of people apply. All right. Um, last one, I don't know. What was it like 2,700-ish, Niels? Do you remember in that yeah, range? That would be. Um, so, you know, somewhere around 3,000, between 2,500 and 3,000 people will apply. Okay. And, and we want to let as many people in as possible, but if you're not going to succeed in raising a fund, then there's no point in coming into the program, right? And how do you raise funds? Well, you get PACs. So there's some people that we like, but we're not sure they can do it, okay? So we're like, this person's really strong. Uh, they're very smart. They have an amazing background like you, Evan, uh, but we're not sure they can do it, right? So we have a pre-curriculum which says, um, we like you, we think you're great. Uh, prove to us you can do it and we'll let you in the program. And the way you prove to us that you can do it is you can get commitments from limited partners for your thesis. Because here's what's going to happen. If you can't do it now, you're going to come in the program and the very first thing you're going to do in the program is get commitments from limited partners. So, you know, whether you do it now or in a few weeks from now, you're going to have to do it. So you need to get commitments from limited partners if you have that pre-curriculum. It's not just enough to send it out. It's not just enough to go through the exercise. You have to actually get some commitments. And, and the good news for you is if you get those commitments, you're going to be ahead of your peers in the program who are going to have to get the commitments in the first few weeks of the program to stay enrolled. Because again, if you can't get commitments, you can't be a venture capitalist, right? That you have to be able to raise money for the fund, right? Like, let's say I gave you a million dollars and you have a $10 million fund and that's all you could raise you're dead, right? So you got like, it doesn't like, you know, there's no, no, no shortcut, right? You can get some money easy, but you're going to have to go raise money. 
And so if you can't raise money, you, you, you can't start a VC fund. All right, let's go to Elon. Let's go to Elon. Uh, do we have any statistics about how many VCs are still actively running after going through the program? Yeah, hundred percent. So all of hundred. So we we don't. If you look at our homepage, uh, govclab.com, there's stats on that homepage, and those are all firms that are active. So we we do we remove. So you'll see. Um, I think it's. It's counting upwards. I don't know why. Uh, 300, 398, 398 firms. So what we do is, um, and and there's a date. So a snapshot as of November, 2023. So it's a little more because we're graduating right now. So it'd be 450-ish, right? Um, and so every single firm that goes through the program and is listed as an alumni, we're, we validate with multiple times a year their operations, everything. So if any reason comes up and they stop working on the fund or they the fund ends for some reason, whatever, uh, we remove them. So actually the number of people that finish the program is higher than 398, but we, we remove anyone that's not actively. So though all the stats are active firms that are either in market um, deploying capital or in market raising money, uh, one or the other. Hani has been self-learning VC and wants to apply, uh, but has no previous experience in VC, but does have experience in startups. Uh, is that a roadblock? Look, um, you let me be super clear. This is not a learning program, okay? You're going to launch a fund. All right. And you're going to learn how to launch the fund by launching the fund. So if you're interested in learning, this is not the program for you. There's $20,000 programs and we have a free Venture Institute program, which you could put in uh, the chat, Niels. Um, so you can learn. We do have a free learning program and there's paid learning programs out galore. Um, and our free learning program is fantastic. And you'll actually get a job in venture capital. VC Lab, you will launch a fund, right? If you don't launch a fund, we, <clears throat> we remove you, right? We just talked about that. So first, if we don't think you're going to launch a fund in the program, we remove you from the program. And then if we don't, if you're not working on your fund to launch it actively after the program, we remove you as an alumni. So you have to launch a fund to go through VC Lab. So if you're serious about launching a fund, yeah, apply. We're going to help you launch a fund. Okay, they are saying they are here to launch a fund. So we wish you the best of luck with that. Next question comes from Osai. Um, They're asking, what's a good range of number of deals to have warehoused by the end of the program? Yeah, so there's two kinds of, of warehouse deals. Right. And I think I name them differently because it's confusing. Most terms in venture are terrible. Like uh, carried interest means different things based on who you're talking to. Perfect case. If you're talking to an LP, it means a percentage of the total uh, amount raised. If you're talking to an employee, it's a percentage of that percentage. So it's, a, it's so it's actually it literally has different meanings depending on who you're talking to, which is crazy. But uh, warehouse deals is another one. So it has different meanings. So they're warehouse deals that you're planning to do. So they could be called portfolio deals. And then there's warehouse deals that you've invested in before and you're transferring into the fund. So ideally, managers will do both. They'll have deals that they've done as an angel investor and they're transferring those angel investments into the fund at cost nor I would say the average is two or three deals that we're seeing. It's like, it's not two or three, it's probably two point something, but it's between two and three deals on average are being transferred into new funds. Uh, in terms of pipeline deals, deals that you plan to do when the fund is closed, most managers raise capital and invest in two or three funds immediately after the first close. So you want to have 
two, probably five deals that you want to do. And then you kind of keep an eye on them. And then when you close the fund, you do two or three deals almost immediately afterwards. Um, Ayo is asking if uh, venture debt is uh, covered in the curriculum. No, we don't. We don't do venture debt. If you're interested in starting a venture debt fund, it's really more like a venture debt firm because venture debt doesn't have funds. Um, we're not the program for you. Then Praveen, um, they apply you can, uh, so he's yeah. asking, I applied to core 13 late. Does my application get moved over? Yes. Uh, usually, but why don't you check for him, Niels, and make sure that that happens. Maybe, um, and okay. take a note after I that. We'll do it for you. We'll move you to cohort 14. You don't have to do it. We also send links and things to remind people the early admissions deadline is coming up next week. Everybody get your, we're, we're already doing pretty good on this cohort. Um, I can look up the numbers, but they were last I checked, they were pretty impressive. Uh, so we're at about 800 applied, if I recall. Oh, I, it logged me out of the system. Do you have those numbers, Niels? Um, I'm logging in here. Uh, 831 last I checked. Okay. Yeah. So that that's actually really great. to bre well, So we'll definitely break 1,000. Yeah, 839. Um, and we've got uh, about... Just a, just 40 even accepted and confirmed. That's a little low. Um, but it's what happens is everybody gets starts getting their applications in by the early deadline. So we'll break a thousand applicants by the early deadline and then we'll break, you know, maybe 100, 150 accepted and confirmed. So then it becomes harder and harder to get in, by the way, because the program starts filling up and that, you know, more and more people come in late. So a lot of people apply very late. And at that point there may be 200 or 300 people enrolled. So there's only like maybe a hundred spots. So it's always best to get your application in before the early deadline. Everyone, The cohort size is about 250 firms roughly, which is 350 plus people. So about 250 firms, give or take. Um, yes, Laura, the, the, the back office is, someone's asking, it's called Decile Hub and the AI is called Decile Base. You can go to decilehub.com right now. So it is free for people in the program. We're going to be opening up a kind of limited free version to the world later this year. And then if you want some of the features that people in the program get, there'll be like a premium upgrade. Um, but it's an amazing software product. It, it's going it, to, like, it's the dream of what every venture capitalist wish they had because it integrates, again, DocSend, DocuSign, Affinity, blood you know everything into one uh solution and so when someone looks at a presentation for example you can see that in your crm instantly right you don't have to write some zapier connection blah 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 and make blah, 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 all this complex crap it's just done for you uh yeah. what's the cost uh and percentage ownership of the fund uh the program's free right? There's no cost. There's no, we don't take a stake in the funds. Uh, we charge for uh, when, if it, you have to apply to work with our back office provider, and that's the, right now the only thing we charge for, and we're cheaper than the alternatives and better uh, because they suck. Um, but, you know, in my humble opinion, uh, so Carta and Angel. So we have a 94 net promoter score on our back office stuff. Um, we've got a bit of a backlog. So, you know, we have 100 firms right now. Uh, we're long, uh, over 100 firms, about 30 something in are in process of launching. Um, so, yeah, we have more demand than supply on the one premium 
product we offer. And it's not a, this isn't freemium or anything. Lots of people go through VC lab and they don't work with us because first of all, they have to apply to work with us and not everyone that applies to work with us gets to work with us. So no freemium. No, it's just free. Do we support a road towards a multi LP CVC with corporates as LPs? Uh, you can apply. Uh, we, 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 like if we see, if we see a lot of people uh, applying in a certain genre, uh, we, you know, we, 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 we consider doing a track. So we have a track for uh, venture studios because we have a lot of venture studios coming in. We have a track for emerging managers. Uh, we do some uh, track activities for female and, and women GPs. Uh, so we, we have launched some CVCs. Uh, but it's not a real focus of ours because listen, we're gonna you, you CVCs are slow and we move fast. So the program's like Phew! and you're like, whoa, I'm still at the finish line. <laughs> you know, like, well, I can't make, you know, I can't even get a meeting in the time. Like, you know, so you may need to get a meeting with execs. It could take you months to get the meeting and and the program's over. Right. So our next question is about speed. Uh, how can we maintain a 5.7 month closing marks if statistics show that it's um, usually taking 18 months? Yeah. So look, you, statistics in the like people are do like there's no book on how to close a fund, right? And even if there were, it would be out of date the minute it was written. Okay. There's no good programs on how to launch a fund. Right. There's there's a couple accelerators out there, you know, again, not the best, in my humble opinion. But um, so, you know, most people learn by doing trial and error. And like you ask some friends, what did you do? And by the way, like a VC who launched a fund has a unit of one. Right. They've done it once. OK. And you're like, how did you do it? Like, well, I did it this way. And like, let me help you. I've we've helped launch 450 funds. OK, so and then before that, I've launched, I don't know, like 25 funds. So I'm around 475 funds that I've and firms that I've helped to launch. OK, that means that the team at VC Lab has launched more firms than anyone else in human history. OK, more than the biggest law firms at this point. OK. And so we like we kind of know how to launch firms better than what is practiced in the world today, which is like trial and error. Like, well, you know, I did it, didn't work. So now I'm going to do this and that didn't work. And now I'm going to try this and that didn't work. Oh, but this is working. So, you know, that's how people launch funds, trial and error. Uh, uh, let me help you. Trial and error, not a great way to launch. If there's a roadmap and you can, you, I, I could take a roadmap or I could do trial and error to, you, you know, as an intelligent human being in 2024, take the roadmap. OK, especially when you're like doing something like climbing Mount Everest, like I'll just make my own gear list and I, yeah, I'll find my own way to the top and da, da, da. don't do that. Very bad idea. Lots of dead bodies up there. Right. And by the way, that's why new managers have such a bad rap, because most new managers fail because they try trial and error and they die on the mountain. OK. So how do we get to 5.7 months? Well, we've launched 450 firms, right? And we've optimized, we rewrite the curriculum every single time, every time based on the learnings from the last time and the circumstances in the market, okay? So you're actually, cohort 14 is getting version 15 of our curriculum, which is again, constantly updated based on market circumstances. So it not only gets better, but it continues to adjust to the market. So that's how we're, you know, three to five X better than, than the market. 
How can someone maximize their chances of uh, getting into the program? Well, uh, look, you know, apply now. That's your best shot. Like you could take you if you're you are who you are and you're there's not enough time in the admissions process for you to like refactor you. Um, if you want to come into cohort 15, maybe go through the uh, Venture Institute, learn the ins and outs of the venture capital industry, uh, and, and you can prepare a little bit more. But you are you, right? So if you want to apply to cohort 14, there's not enough time to build your LinkedIn following and do anything. So the single best thing that you can do is put together a strong and thoughtful application and get it in as early as possible because we're more likely to accept people um, earlier than later. Because again, by the end of the admissions period, there's going to be a hundred spots and five to 700 very high quality people competing for those hundred spots. And it's just much more difficult to get it. We have another question on uh, like, what's the most ideal time to join the program as a first time manager? Um, is it very early in the journey or just when you're ready to start LP conversations? Look, you we, we take you through the whole journey. Here's the problem. Even if you think you're later than you are, you're not because you've likely done things out of order and made mistakes. Okay, how do I know this? Because I see it all the time. So people are like, I have a lawyer, I have a thesis, I have the materials. They have a terrible lawyer with bad documents. Their thesis isn't very good and their materials often suck. So you have to throw all that away. You know how often we throw that stuff away? Every single cohort with dozens of managers. Everything they've done previously is thrown away because they did it by trial and error, trying to figure things out, trying to save money, listening to people who started one firm, not hundreds of firms, and doing it the way they were told, which was by someone who did it once, which is like, and so they end up having like a mess. And, you know, it's like, man, yeah, the thesis isn't really good because you're not getting commitments, your deck doesn't make any sense, it's too long, and the docs produced by your lawyer are worthless. And you spent 50 grand on them, right? And so you, so you, the best bet is if you're thinking, if you're serious about starting a fund, you should join as soon as you're serious. Yeah, I'm gonna start a fund, we'll help you get the thesis, we'll help you start raising, and you're gonna, you're gonna do it quickly, right? But you should be serious about starting a fund. We're nearing the final 10 minutes. Uh, so please remember to upvote any questions uh, in the chat to maximize the chances of most interesting questions being yeah, asked. Yeah, so everything has happened that I said would happen. We're entering the last 10 minutes. We have many, many questions. Niels, you're going to have to go through and eliminate questions we've answered before. But everyone do me a favor, please. Read the questions that you see and do, and and just upvote ones that you like. I'll be doing it as well here, but we have too many questions so don't ask, it's not even worth asking any more questions. It's just at this point upvoting only. Um so shall we get started Niels with yeah. maybe Okay, let's maybe paraphrase this a little uh so in terms of our regional focus is it just US, Europe or more? Yeah, so look, um and there's a question about LPs in Europe uh, or the U.S. So as it, we're going to cover this a lot in thesis, and maybe you could put the pre-curriculum in there, Niels, for the thesis for everybody. Uh, completing the pre-curriculum for the thesis will be very helpful for you, by the way, in the program and starting that now. You got to pick one region where you're going to do most of your investing in focus, okay? So if it's Europe, it's Europe. If it's US, it's US. If it's Africa, it's Africa. It's not Africa and the US, Africa and Europe or Middle East and blankety blank. It's one region. Lots of reasons for that. Mainly the main reason, that's what LPs want. So if you're like, I'm doing Africa and the US, that means that the LPs have to do regulatory and tax filings in every country where you make investments. And that just gets really cumbersome and they don't want to do it. So you may think it's the best idea ever, but you have to pick one. 
In addition, there was the question I saw was also about Europe and the U.S. Europe is hostile to venture capital right now. So even if you set a fund up in Europe, you will most likely domicile the vehicle somewhere else. In the same way with crypto in the U.S., if you're doing a crypto fund, the U.S. is hostile to crypto right now. If you set up a crypto fund in the U.S., they're going to come after you. They're going to make your life miserable. Why would you do that? So you set your crypto funds up in the BVI. Similarly in Europe, you can you don't set your fund up in Europe because it's hostile to venture capital. The regulatory environment's insane. So you would set the fund up somewhere else and and, and invest in Europe. We have multiple people asking if you are personally reviewing all applications. Uh, so I used to review every application. Now I review um, not every application. So I review a lot of the applications, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. I check everyone that's accepted for sure. I review a lot of people on the bubble and I probably, I'd say maybe a third of the applicants I'll look at. Maybe, maybe more, we'll see. But uh, it used to be 100%. Now it's like a third. Okay. Uh, how long of an angel investing track record should we target before applying to the program? Uh, I would target... Uh, it, well, you don't need an angel investing track record. Let's start there. But it's it, it's very helpful. Uh, if you have one, That's that's great, right? So I would say... Think about it like this. Um, even if you have an angel investing track record and it's not related to your thesis, that doesn't really matter. Or if you don't have any interesting companies, it doesn't really matter. So really what you want to do with angel investing is number one, get companies related to your thesis. And then number two, uh, get some interesting companies that have markups or traction in the market. So it's not how long, it's that you want to have thesis related and interesting companies that are ideally marked up in your in your portfolio. So if you're thinking of starting a fund, right, one of the fastest and, and easiest hacks is finalize your thesis and then make some kick-ass angel investments and transfer those angel investments into the fund at cost and hopefully they get marked up. And then what happens, let's say I do a $25,000 investment and let's say it's an AI company and let's say it gets like a 10X markup, which is low in AI these days. So now it's worth 250,000, but I transfer it into the fund. I'll transfer it at 25,000 and the everyone who cut all the LPs will get the benefit of a return of two hundred twenty five thousand, right? The differential in the markup, uh, just by coming in the fund, and so that makes your fund more attractive to investors because they're like, oh, I get a markup right away because there's this valuable thing in there already. So if start investing now, start investing in your thesis. And start investing in hot deals. You don't you don't need a lot of time. You just need thesis related and hot deals. Any thoughts on minimum ticket sizes yeah. for LPs and fund sizes for LATAM funds? Yeah. So the minimum investment by an LP in a fund is a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. It's sent in through capital calls. You can ask that question in decile base. Uh, and it will give you a great answer. The The target fund size for LATAM is two and a half to $5 million, right? And then you, if you get more, great. You can always oversubscribe, but you look terrible if you go under. Now we have a supporter package, um, which you may want to put a link in there. And this is a package for LPs to come in for a lower minimum, 50,000. But in exchange for that, they have to help. So it's like, look, if you want to come in at fifty thousand, we'll let you in at a lower minimum, but you gotta, you gotta help me. It um, says I'm a finalist for cohort fourteen. Would it be possible to get feedback 
Uh, uh, all a finalist means, Nicholas, is that we're reviewing your application with the team right now. It's so your application is in review. Um, so you could be in a finalist state for as long as, you know, a month, uh, because you may, there are some people that we're reviewing that are at the top of the stack, right? And that's like, we're going to let them in. And there's some people that we're reviewing that are not at the top of the stack. And there are people ahead of them that are better, that will get in before, um, and so, you know, it just depends on where the, in the stack you are, how long you're in that, in that queue, but it can be up to a month. Yeah. Um, is there a preferred profile to be admitted in the program? Like what are some good traits, I guess, of successful applicants? Uh, you know, being a successful angel investor certainly will help a lot. And the pre-curriculum will, will talk, uh, through a lot of this stuff. Uh, let's go through three fast questions. Do you wanna find three really great questions? And uh... Uh, During the program, will we advise on firm structure and other logistical activities? Yeah, we're gonna take you through everything. And, and everyone here, do me a favor, okay? Since we're not getting to every question, which I warned about, so if you had gotten the questions in earlier, we probably could have gotten through more. But that's okay. I, it happens every time. So it's the, don't take it personally. It is what it is. However, we have a tool to help. That's all base. It will literally answer the most complicated venture capital questions that you have. It's like magic. So it's well known in the AI world that broadly based AIs kind of suck because they like it like knows a lot about a lot, which ends up kind of making it sound like a dilettante when you focus the training data down you tend and you get very high quality focused training data ai's really excel and decile base has exactly that very focused training data right very narrow in its scope so you can literally ask it anything about vc lab the program venture investing and it's going to give you a, a very impressive answer okay um, how much do I need to have now in order to get to the program and launch the fund? So generally speaking, you want to have 10% of your fund in hard commitments and another um, uh, roughly 10% of your fund in soft commitments before you start forming the fund. And you'll form the fund towards the end of the program. So you don't need anything now to get in and join the program, but you will need to get that 10% hard and 10% soft within four months or so of the start of the program. And we're going to help you do that. We'll help you do all the formation, everything, every, like we're here to help. And let me leave, let me close on this point. I got to jump into another AMA with cohort 13, actually. Um, we see venture as the solution to the problems of the world. Okay. Because the world is broken and we need things to fix it. We need new means of everything, transportation, food distribution, everything. And the VCs are going to fund the solutions that fix the world. And so we are in this to create the ethical managers that are going to make this world a better place by putting money where their mouth is and backing entrepreneurs that are going to change the world for the better. And we're going to find these amazing managers like yourself all around the world, every place, everywhere, and help them launch funds to start fixing every last problem we face until it's we can be proud of what we built and better place than what we inherited to our children. That's our goal. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful day.